Here I'm going to show you how to create a navigation dashboard using dynamic hyperlinks in Excel, where we can click a link and go to any worksheet and any cell within that worksheet throughout the workbook, even when we use a named range for its reference. And the best part is that this is easy to manage. So you want to add another link, we go to the end, hit tab, and let's say we want to go for sales, and how about F5? And this time it'll be for the lowest sales. And there we go. Click the link and we're all set. So the best part about this is it's easy to manage. And if we want, we can hide all of this so that the user only sees the links. Now this tip will help you automate your workbook and the creation of a navigation dashboard. But if you'd like to even further automate it and save yourself hours of time, check out our full Excel courses on teachexcel.com. The Excel VBA and macro course is especially helpful and will take you all the way from beginner and intermediate level to expert at VBA and automating your workbooks. To view that course, click the link below this video and it might even be on sale. But now let me open this up and show you how to make this. Here we have a blank template with no table and no formulas. And what we're really trying to do here is to build the hyperlink function. So equals hyperlink. And we have two arguments, the link location, so where it's going to go in the workbook, and the friendly name. That's what we want to show the user for the link here that they're going to click. You can make it generic, like click or click to view, but here we're going to use the value from the display cell. So now we need to figure out how to make the link location argument. And uh, let's go make some basic references. Let's go here and hit equals. We go over here to sales and we hit this cell. We hit enter and now we have a reference. And uh, this uh, reference is what we want to make in the hyperlink function. But we want to make it easy to manage. So we don't want to have the user to have to go into the formula to change it all the time. So what we do is we break out the worksheet reference here and the cell reference here. And then we also allow them to use a named reference here. So if you name your cells, like we have here for the invoice, this cell down here, if we click this, we see it says invoice total. So then we can reference that by going equals invoice and invoice total. So these are the two types of references that we want to make inside of the hyperlink function. And really this table just helps us make those references. Now what I'm going to do here is to make the reference by hand over here and then we'll break it out in the table. So uh, let's go over here to basic equals hyperlink. And for the link location, we need quotation marks, paste it in, and then a friendly name. Let's just put click. But this won't work until we use the pound sign or the hashtag. Then let's hit enter, click here, and there we go. And it's the same thing for our named reference. So we can grab the named reference, go over here, equals, hyperlink, quote, hashtag, paste that guy in, close it, and click. And there we go. Now all we need to do is to make a formula that can figure out if we need to use this reference here or this reference here. And that's what the combined formula is going to do. And that allows us to either input a sheet and cell reference here and get the reference from that or use this cell for the reference. Now let us combine them and we begin with the hyperlink function. But now let's throw in an if. And I'm going to hit Alt Enter to put that on the next line. So if. Now what do we want to check? Here I'm just going to check if you input a value for the cell that should have the named reference. So if is blank and let's choose the cell name. So if that is blank, it means we're going to use the sheet and the cell cells right here to create our reference. So all we need to do now is put a comma, alt, enter. And here we build our reference for a sheet and cell. So quote, hashtag, sales exclamation point, F3, 
close quote, comma, then alt enter. If it is not blank, we use what will be in that cell. We'll update these to make them dynamic in just a moment. But for now, I'm going to hard code that. Invoice total, close quote. Then we can close the function, then a comma, alt enter, friendly name. Let's go click to view, close quote. Close that guy up, enter, and now we've got a link. And it should take us to sales F3. There we go. But if we do have a value over here, let's just put one. Then we go back to our combined formula, click this guy, and we go here, invoice total. So that's how we update the references based on named versus sheet or cell. And now all we need to do is to grab this guy and make it dynamic. So I'm going to hit Control A, Control C to select everything. Let's go over here and let's finish this up. So we want sales to be dynamic, not hard coded. So we delete it. We close up the hashtag space ampersand space and we select B5 for sheet, then space ampersand, space, put quotes around the exclamation point, then space ampersand, space, and C5. Delete that last quote. And now we have a dynamic sheet and cell reference. For the invoice total, it's going to be a little bit easier. We delete this, go over here, space ampersand, space, click the cell for the name, and that is it. This is our entire dynamic formula. Hit enter. Now let's update this for invoice total. Click this. Perfect. How about we delete this and we go sales F4 this time. Click here. Perfect. Now the final thing is to make display work. So let's hit F2 to go into this formula and delete, click to view, E5, enter, and let's put sales in there, perfect. Delete these guys, click in here, hit control T to make it a table, and let's change the size so we don't include navigation, so A4, okay. And there we go, we wanna add a new one, we can go to the right, tab, and let's go for invoice total. Click that guy. Perfect. So a little bit of work to set it up. Make sure you get the formula correct. But then once you have that, you are good to go. And I accidentally added an extra column here for our table, but that's not a big deal. The most important thing is just to get the formulas correct and then format your worksheet however you'd like to format it so you can hide the data if you want to. Select the columns, right click, and hide. Don't forget to go to teachexcel.com to download this workbook and to check out our full Excel courses if you'd like to learn how to better automate Excel and save yourself hours of time. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next week.